Hi everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome. So in today's video, I'm going to be speaking about the Hola massacre that happened in Kenya in 1959. As is the case for all of my videos, I know that the information that I have is not exhaustive. So many files and stories have been erased, silenced, removed and lost in the archives. This is simply a compilation of information that I could find. So if you have any personal stories or anything that you want to add, feel free to comment it in the comment section below or you can DM it to me and I will share it on this platform. Let's get straight into it. The Hola massacre was a brutal massacre that took place in a very small town in Kenya called Hola during the Mau Mau uprising and for those of you who don't know what the Mau Mau uprising was or just want a bit of context it was essentially a war fought by the Kenyan Land and Freedom Army also known as the Mau Mau against British authorities and Britain in order to suppress the Mau Mau movement, in order to suppress the liberation movement, the British authorities had funded and established gulags throughout Kenya in order to detain the rebel fighters. This Hola camp specifically housed 506 detainees and 127 of them were isolated in their own little section as they were considered to be those rebels who were uncooperative and would not follow orders. Those rebels refused to take part in the rehabilitation process which was essentially a form of unpaid labour as they were required to labour on the Kenyan irrigation scheme and within that they were required to obey colonial orders which they didn't want to so they didn't. And many reports from Kenyan detainees themselves have expressed that the conditions and the standards of the prisons were honestly terrible as you can imagine. They reported that there was very poor hygiene and that the food provided was really insufficient, it was less than the bare minimum, it was subpar. They went on to speak about how they were treated like subhumans, like slaves, as I said, they were required to do unpaid labour for the British Empire. And in the Hola camp, the British colonial prison officers established a plan to force 88 out of the 127 of the hardcore detainees to work. And this plan was put into action on the 3rd of March 1959. That very order turned out to be extremely bloody and 11 out of those 88 Kenyan prisoners were killed. Though public statements following their death stated that they had died from water contamination, a telegram sent from London as well as the autopsies proved that they had been beaten to death. And the 77 surviving detainees sustained serious, permanent and life-threatening injuries. And unsurprisingly, there was and has been no prosecution. To memorialise those 11 Mau Mau fighters who were killed by British colonial authorities, there is a memorial where they were initially buried in the town of Hola and their remains are still there. That memorial was actually unveiled in 1998 by the then Minister of Education, Honourable S.K. Misioka, I think that's how you pronounce it i'm sorry if it's not and i think what i find most disgusting is britain's attempts to conceal this horrible massacre the true horrors were hidden from the kenyan public and the british public information from a telegram exposed over 50 years later revealed the true atrocities of the hola massacre it confirmed that they did not die via water poisoning but that instead they were beaten to death and it confirmed the number of victims. In the telegram it reads that quote the marks on their bodies are consistent with those caused by heavy sticks, batons and or heavy boots. And this was a telegram sent by Evelyn Baring who was the governor of Kenya between 1952 and 1959 to the Prime Minister in London. It was Evelyn Baring as well as Alan Lennox Boyd, both conservative politicians who were responsible for this cover-up. And the British government did more to cover up this massacre. The British government was adamant that they were not responsible for the brutal massacre. But I mean, if they weren't, then who was? As well as this, they 
officially changed the name of Hola to Galole in order to avoid association, though in 1971, President Kenyatta changed it back to Hola. And what's even shocking is that some of the accounts of the Mau Mau uprising, which was such a seminal point in history, don't even mention the Hola massacre. This is just testament to how much the archive formed and contributed to by the British government continue to silence and erase important voices like it's actually ridiculous and when it comes to massacres and wars it feels so silly to say but these were actual people like these were just people who wanted liberation from British colonial rule it was oppressive and they wanted their freedom and this is what they get for it they get murdered they are people who had families whose families were mourning them in 1959 and whose families continue to mourn them today in 2022 like the legacies of British colonialism and imperialism are not over they're still ongoing people are still feeling these feelings people are still mourning those losses and people are still remembering their loved ones so yeah if anyone is interested in learning more about the Mau Mau and the Hola massacre there is one book called Imperial Reckonings by Caroline Elkin that I know that goes into quite a bit of detail but if you are interested in like stories accounts of the Mau Mau uprising from black and indigenous Kenyans then I will link some resources down below and the sources that I use so that you can also access them as well I'm gonna go on like a little bit of a ramble and you know like a historian kind of talk but I really do feel like it is up to us to garner these histories and for us to archive them because we know that the state and the British government especially will destroy them if if they if they could they would and they definitely have and they will continue to so these personal stories i think are really important to recontextualizing history to narrating history from the point of view that actually matters from those of the kenyan liberation fighters and also kenyans who maybe weren't involved in the fight for liberation or who weren't involved in the Mau Mau uprising directly but who still saw and witnessed the events that occurred between 1952 and 1960. And this is just to say that the Hola massacre, not only was it brutal in nature, I think the aftermath was equally, if not more brutal, as it really tried to hide the true nature of the attack and it really tried to silence those people, those families who are mourning. I think that is honestly so disgusting if the British government have done something wrong that's one thing but for them to completely deny responsibility and deny the opportunity for the victims to speak up you know that's just not that's just not good that is it for this video if you didn't know anything about the Hola massacre I hope you've learned something and if you knew some I hope you know you you know a little bit more now and on that note I will see you in the next video bye